All right, CDC announced late Friday that they will be investigating a possible stroke risk linked to Pfizer's bivalent vaccine. Let's go over what they released on Friday. Now, of course, they released this Friday late because you don't want the news to really catch on to it, right? You just want to sort of bury it. So they release it Friday afternoon on a three-day weekend, and that way maybe the news won't circulate this around. But here is what they wrote. CDC and FDA identify preliminary COVID-19 vaccine safety signal for persons aged 65 years and older. Transparency and vaccine safety are top priorities for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration. So they say that the U.S. government agencies use multiple complementary safety monitoring systems to help detect possible safety signals for vaccines and other medical countermeasures as early as possible and to facilitate further investigation as appropriate. Often these safety systems detect signals that could be due to factors other than the vaccine itself. So what they're saying here is, you know, we're trying to be really transparent right? Uh, we want to be transparent. We've got these multiple different reporting agencies. So they've got VAERS. They've got all these different little um, systems that they've set up. Of course, when there are vaccine signals that we see in those uh, systems like VAERS, they say, oh, well, it is not accurate. You know, it's either it's accurate or it isn't accurate. Either you set up the system because you want people to use it and you're going to actually refer to it, or you're just, why even have the system if you're going to point to it and say, it's just, it, you know, it's, it don't even take that seriously. It's not accurate. So they are saying, though, that they did, you know, they have these monitoring systems. And even though for the last couple of years they've told us don't pay attention to those, they're now saying, okay, we are seeing a safety signal pop up and we're going to take a deeper look into this. So they say all signals require further investigation and confirmation from formal epide epidemiologic studies. With one system, when one system detects a signal, the other safety monitoring systems are checked to validate whether the signal represents an actual concern with the vaccine or if it can be determined to be of no clinical re relevance. So they're setting us up saying, now don't take this too seriously. We don't really know. I mean, this, you know, we'll look into it, but it might mean that there's absolutely nothing here. We need to have more information before we can actually determine whether or not this is actually from the vaccine. Um, so they say following the availability and use of the updated bivalent COVID-19 vaccine. So they're just talking about the bivalent vaccine at this point. They're not talking about the first dose, the second dose, the, the other boosters, the two boosters. And now we're on the bivalent vaccine, right? I think that's where we are. <laughs> is that where we're at on all this? We had dose one and two for sure. That was the first, uh, the, the primary round. Then there was certainly the booster and I believe a fourth booster before we, before we even got to bivalent. Is that right? So they're saying this is just about the bivalent COVID vaccine. They say CDC's vaccine safety data link, VSD, a near real-time surveillance system, met the statistical criteria to prompt additional investigation into whether there was a safety concern for ischemic stroke. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, in people ages 65 and older who received the Pfizer biotech COVID vaccine. Rapid response investigation of the signal in the VSD raised a question of whether people 65 and older who have received the Pfizer biotech COVID-19 vaccine bivalent were more likely to have this particular type of stroke in the 21 days following vaccination compared to days 22 to 42 following vaccination. So they're looking at this bivalent only at this point. They're seeing a safety signal that the bivalent might cause this particular type of stroke. I, I keep, I'm probably not going to say it right, but... I, uh, ischemic stroke, I believe is how you say it, and only in the age of 65 and older, which is kind of odd, you know, um, why would it only cause a stroke in people 65 and older? Why wouldn't it possibly cause strokes in people under 65? Um, hard to know why they think that that is like uh, the age group, but I guess that's potentially possible. We do know, for example, that um, the risk of myocarditis is greater for younger people, so perhaps the risk for stroke is greater for older people. So they're saying that people who receive this vaccine, they're seeing an uptick right after, within that 21-day window, of these people getting this, uh, having this type of stroke. So that's what they're seeing. Compared to afterwards, they have that same cohort, that same group of people, 65 and over, and they're seeing that if they are past the 21-day mark of getting this vaccine, they're not seeing an uptick in, in, uh, in this type of stroke for people in that when they look deeper at the data and they see 
because I because really the way it would be is if it's not the vaccine and if you're over the age of 65, there would be a consistency in how many strokes this group has. So there's a, a, a certain a percentage of people who are going to have strokes. They're going to have strokes no matter what happens in their life, right? It should be just a set number of, of people. And it shouldn't matter whether you got the vaccine or not if the vaccine does not cause strokes. What that means is uh, you should see the same number of strokes for people whether they got the vaccine 21 days ago or whether they got the vaccine 40 days ago. It wouldn't matter the same number of strokes would happen because you're just people have strokes. However, the safety signal in this system shows an uptick in people having strokes within that 21 day window of getting the vaccine, more strokes per this population than people who maybe got the vaccine, they didn't get a stroke and they kept living their lives and then they also just still didn't get a stroke. So that would kind of point to the fact that perhaps these vaccines are causing strokes. So they say this preliminary signal has not been identified with the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine bivalent. So this is just Pfizer's, not Moderna's, they're saying. They say there also may be other confounding factors contributing to the signal identified in the VSD that merit further investigation. I'm not really sure which one would do that. I'm not sure what would be the other confounding factor. If you got the vaccine within 21 days and ended up with the stroke, or if you got the vaccine, uh, you know, after 20, and it's been 40 days, what would be potentially the confounding fac factor other than the, the vaccine? Um, it, because they're looking at all, they're looking at vaccinated people in this, and they're seeing an uptick in the group that just was vaccinated within 21 days. They're not looking at those vaccinated with the bivalent and those not vaccinated with the bivalent. And maybe then you could say something like the people who got the bivalent vaccine, perhaps they, um, perhaps they had a stroke because they're more vulnerable people and that's why they got the vaccine. So then you could say, well, the reason they had a stroke is because the people that are more likely to get this vaccine are just more vulnerable. That would be a contributing sort of confounding factor. However, that's not what they were looking at. They're looking at the group that got vaccinated. Uh, all of them got vaccinated with the bivalent vaccine. It's just some got it and had a stroke within 21 days. And then others, they didn't have the stroke and they continued on and still did not have a stroke. So what would that be in a confounding factor? Not really sure. They said that, so it wasn't Moderna. Um, they're also saying though that, it, that no other safety systems that they have set up are showing a similar signal so they're not seeing this being reported anywhere else. They're just seeing it in this one reporting system. Now that could be because doctors that uh, identify strokes only use this particular system. Maybe they don't report to other systems. Maybe other systems, um, other types of healthcare professionals or regular people tend to report versus this particular one. That could be the case. So uh, we can't write it off and say, well, no, there's, this doesn't exist because this didn't exist in any other safety, in any other monitoring system. There could be that this system is used largely by this one group of people who would report this particular symptom. So it says a large study of updated vaccines from uh, bivalent vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna using the Centers uh, for Medicare and Medicaid Services database revealed no increased risk of uh, ischemic stroke. So they're saying also the VA didn't report anything. Um, you know, they're not seeing this in VAERS. They're not seeing this in their global safety database. So they go on and say, we're not seeing this anywhere else except this VSD. So they say, um, so they're saying in this whole thing that they don't think it's likely that the vaccine is causing the strokes because they're not seeing the safety signal appear any in any other uh, of their reporting services. That's what they're claiming. And they, because of this, have decided, even though they are announcing, which is a step in the right direction, that they are going to be investigating this further they have not changed their vaccination recommendation. They still recommend the bivalent vaccine for anyone six months and older, which is crazy. Why would you, I mean, uh, most people are not even taking this. The uptake for this vaccine is very low. People are not feeling the need for this bivalent vaccine. 
they've had COVID, they've recovered from COVID, they've taken all the other shots, they saw that it didn't do what these people said it was going to do, stop the spread and the pandemic, protect your loved ones, protect yourself. It wasn't doing that as much. Uh, there is an argument to be made that the vaccines do protect people over the age of 65 for a certain period of time. We don't know the, the, the side effects of that, how often they're going to continue to have to be vaccinated and boosted. You know, it just seems to kind of go on and on and on. But nonetheless, there does seem to be a link in the data that shows people over the age of 65, if they do get that first round, at least that primary dose, that they do seem to have better outcomes for a period of time. That is just what the data says. Um, but to recommend for six months and older, you know, there's still that, that conversation that they're not really as willing to have, which is why are they even recommending this for people really under the age of 40 to say that you must get vaccinated, you need to get vaccinated, we recommend this vaccine for everybody. That does seem a little bit odd when the data doesn't back that up. The data really is only there for older age groups. Uh, younger age groups, in fact, the data is starting to kind of even show in opposite of that, that it may be more harmful than it is beneficial, which is why many countries have halted the vaccine for younger people. Uh, but the United States, of course, being bought out by big pharma is not really going to be doing that. So they're still recommending this vaccine for six months and older. They're not willing to change that recommendation. Same thing happened when it came to investigating these vaccines, not the bivalent, but the primary dose vaccine, the, the original one. When they were uh, looking at that for when they were looking at it to see if it was causing menstrual cycle problems for women, which we know it, it did. They did. They then later concluded. I don't know if the CDC came out, but plenty of other studies concluded in Europe that, yes, it does cause um, menstrual irregularities for women. They announced, OK, we're going to look into this menstrual irregularity issue, but we still recommend it, even though we have no idea what that means. You know, we don't think it's a big deal, they say. They've said that about myocarditis. We don't think it's a big deal for you to have a minor heart injury. Oh, it's just minor heart injury, but minor. They say, we don't think it's a big deal for you to worry about your fertility. Yeah, I know it messes with your menstrual cycle, but that's just your menstrual cycle, as if your menstrual cycle is not directly linked to your fertility. But, you know, this is where we're at with this, the minds of, uh, of uh, science right now here in the United States. So this is interesting. This has come out. They are saying, we still recommend it. We don't think it's actually causing a problem, even though we see an uptick in this one particular database that's showing there maybe is a, sig a significant enough safety signal for them to bring it up. So the point of this is, the fact that they're even bringing it up at all means there probably is a serious safety signal. Because you know they wouldn't say a word if there wasn't. You know that they would just brush this under the rug like they did. They were slow to come out about blood clots with the J&J &J vaccine. They were slow to come out about myocarditis. They have been slow about everything. So the fact that they're even bringing this up makes us think this is something that's actually happening. And of course, they're going to say, but we don't really think so, like they did about myocarditis, like they did about blood clots, and they came out to be actually side effects of these vaccines. So this is actually a big deal that they're admitting this. It's actually a big deal they're admitting this. So we will keep an eye on this as time goes on. And my guess is it's not just the bivalent vaccine that caused it, but my guess is the safety signal's been around uh, with the primary doses or boosters as well. Of course, I don't have any data on that, but that's just my guess. It's important now more than ever to diversify your portfolio. We don't know what's in store for the future with all of this inflation and geopolitical instability. I'm a big fan of investing in gold and have been my entire life. My family taught me always that gold was the way to go because it's so stable. And one popular way to invest in gold is through a precious metals IRA, which allows you to convert your current IRA or 401k into an account that holds physical gold and other precious metals. And Birch Gold makes it really easy to do that. You can get a free info kit by visiting birchgold.com slash Kim. For thousands of years, gold has withstood economic and political turmoil. Having a precious metals IRA can provide a hedge against market fluctuations and give you more confidence in your financial future. You can also buy gold through Birch Gold in the form of coins or bars, if that's what you prefer. So visit birchgold.com Kim to get your free info kit.